Hello everybody, Dynabro007 here. Uh, to show off the new, uh, let's just get down to it, just the new Cenozoic. I got it a little bit ago, but I just didn't, I didn't like hatch it, I didn't have time to record the thing on it. <laughs> I'm just really happy to have this damn thing, because I missed the Aramatherium, so I wasn't gonna miss the Megatherium. I just did, I didn't want to. I didn't want to miss both of the giant sloth creatures. And there's the Segnosaurus tournament going on right now, but I don't even... I'm just... I'm working on it. I'm currently in first place of Predator. I just... I got to number one in Dominator on Monday, and I just kind of been lazy about it. Busy with other things. And, uh, well, see, I'm, I'm gonna get it, because I want to get the, the hybrids, the first herbivore hybrid, or first tournament herbivore hybrid, which is very important. And, of course, you, Odon, who I've already got stuff prepared for. Like, the hair under the head makes him look kind of like a goat. <laughs> it's just a little funny. It's a little funny to me. And they're not gonna sit here and put all these in the freaking hatchery. I'll come back when they're all done. Alright, now that's done and over with. I just, just, uh, let's just get this thing done and over with. Get this thing, yeah. Done and over with it twice, other ways. I just, I'm really excited to see this one because it's another cave creature. And they are so freaking rare in this game. Cave creatures. Whether they be in the sea or they be in the Cenozoic area are my favorite kinds. Which might seem a little odd, but I just, I like it because it's. It's not the, it's not like typical stuff you see. You know, you can go and watch any old Ice Age program, and see, think about it, smile it on, running around a savanna area, attacking things, you see the mammoth in the snow. There's caves, there's this, you know, this one area that's so often ignored, which is why it draws my attention so often, or so much in this game. Because it's not just the typical, oh, snow, grass, Boring. At least in my opinion, because it's just they're a lot more common, a lot more mundane. It's the same for the sea, because in, you know you're watching a, you know, the sea monsters that one program a while ago that I've watched again recently. You know they're always on the surface of the water watching the animals. They're always in the reef. You know they're never in these caves in these dark depths. So rarely seen in any of these programs. Why it's so cool to me. It was like yawning. You know, you just got like some brown, uh, like stripes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And some just, just, just some brown stripes. I wonder if they're gonna go with the same route they have with all the rest of these things and just make it like really. Uh, I would say mundane is the word for it. I would say that more like realistic. You know, the ones that are just more tufts of fur, and the colors are rather drab, and... I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I mean, drab is... I guess it's a really derogatory, really negative, derogatory word. Rather, um... I mean, there's not really any word, because usually any word to describe it is very colorful, it's very negative. But a lot more realistic, it's just something I prefer. Over the fucking... blue, bright, like... Sky blue, we get in the Spinosaurus and shit. The Morphodon down there, I see him with a red crest, purple wings, and blue body. I'm not saying those are bad either, just they're weird. An animal doesn't survive by looking as colorful as a rainbow. Some do, maybe, but evolution tends to favor those that can camouflage themselves. And, you know, being the color of a bag of MMs is not exactly. It's not exactly the best survival tactic. I mean, it is if you want to get eaten for some reason, but other than that, there's no reason for it. This is like white and brown. Simple, but it works. 
But it's been so funny how tiny these guys look in these little light tubes, because the dinosaurs are freaking huge. And you, you get them in the battles and you realize that these guys are actually really small. Like, ridiculously small. If you haven't seen, like, some of the battles, uh, such as when they compare the mammoth to the T-Rex, and the T-Rex is, like, bigger than the mammoth, making the mammoth look like a tiny little, like, baby mammoth, it's hilarious, but it's... You just gotta wonder, why? Why are they so small? I mean, it's pretty... You know, like, it's pretty typical at this point that creatures aren't the right size, but... It's usually compared to, like, it's like one creature that's, like, the wrong size, and not the entirety of every creature that exists within that, within that section of the game that's wrong sized. Disney got Unchuck Ristus, and we're gonna get to that, or Zalmoxes, two who are so wrongly portrayed, it's hilarious. And being compared to each other, they're fine, which is why I just like fighting the Cenozoics by themselves, because, yeah, just fight and run. Looks nice. Looks really nice. Simple, but effective. And I'll be back, because I'm not going to sit on camera with these next freaking four. Alright, there we go, finally. I'm just happy I got to get. I only have to wait like three days, but it, still, I just really was like, I just really wanted to own this guy so badly because now I actually have something that can take down the mammoth. I mean, it's not like it doesn't have a ridiculous amount of attack, but it's still better than fucking the only creature I can use being Andrew Sarkis and other mammoths. Oh, that's beautiful. One single little button. <laughs> he's got like. I said he looked like a goat before, and now he's got like fucking goat horns. I guess he is some sort of sloth goat creature, according to this game. Let's just see. I know he's not gonna have that much attack, or she's not gonna have that much attack, I just... It feels good. It feels good to finally own something that can look a mammoth and go, I've got the advantage, and I'm not a freaking rare. Which I could've gone with Aramatherium, he would've been a super, but then again, with only like 600 attack points here, this guy is not doing himself much favors. He's got more health, really, than attack. More of a health tank, which isn't really... It's still it's not an issue. It's gonna be beyond helpful in the battle arenas. It's gonna be the mammoth killer. Now I would go and do battles in the freaking uh, Sigmasaurus tournament, but I just don't feel like it. It's just oh wow, I bumped down quite a bit since the last time I looked. Holy shit, gotta get back to it. Either way, uh, the only thing I have to talk about is the fact that you may notice that uh, I'm down about. 10 million DNA because I have been like cloning a lot of the, uh, you know, uh, tournament hybrids. And I was gonna go through with it and just get them all out of the way and just knock out all my DNA. And then I heard that Uodon is gonna be more expensive. Was it Uodon or Psychnosuchus? I don't remember. Either one, one of those two is gonna be more expensive than one, one of those two is gonna be more expensive than Metriaphodon, which is why I'm waiting because it'll be even quicker if I just wait for Uodon to be released alongside Psychnosuchus. And if it isn't, well, I'll just get back to cloning endless amounts of Metriaphodon and selling them until I finally got about enough to just be able to, I don't know, maybe I'll drop it down to like 50,000 or something, so I can finally get rid of all this stupid DNA. But that's, that's, that's for later. Either way, I just wanted to show off the Megatherium and I guess I'll go back and battle in the tournament if I fucking have to. I really don't want to. I spent like five hours one morning just getting to number one and down here, and now I'm in number ten in Predator. Oh, what a freaking fantastic time.